Well, hello folks, my name's Ian. And a warm welcome to my shed. Hmm, you've been following along. You know, I've uh, picked up a supply of fire extinguishers. Done a couple of vids playing with them. Now I'm taking them apart. I'm taking them bits. I took the first couple of bits to make it, if it was worthwhile, things didn't plan out the way I thought. But less ado about that, and more let's get stuck into it. We've, we've kept a uh, carbon dioxide, water and foam for use should we ever have a shed fire. God forbid not. That still leaves me with the fact that I've got lots of cylinders to work on and as you can see i've been working away and uh that gave me an idea well that one that one that one and that one did but more about that in a little bit but work away what's up ian not used to getting your leg over yeah not at all <coughs> Pretty, pretty in red. Right. Well, I did myself, didn't I? I thought I was in a, I was in a, a shop. I'm going to say which shop. I thought, oh, I tell you what, they're cheap for a pack of old speckled in. You know, red and white, round uh, label. If you when I got them home. <laughs> They're not all speckled in. They're Hatherwoods, Amber Ale. Cleverly packaged as all speckled in and they're not as strong as well. But, we're going to do a taste test. A blind taste test to see whether I can, you know, have uh, Prosecco instead of Champagne. If I can have Hatherwoods instead of all speckled in, I doubt it very much. But back to what's in hand. I've already been taking quite a few tops off, as you can see. It's a, it's a process of getting the right tools together to do it efficiently, quickly. You know, uh, when I did the first couple, first one was a aluminium CO2 bottle. Great, three kilos of aluminium in that. Brass, solid brass fittings on top. I did the maths, the math on that a while back and said, oh, that's great. I'm getting just over 260, 70 grams of brass per cylinder. That one, and uh, this a big foam one. giving me a kilo of brass is round about it's dropped down to about four pound a kilo so giving me for doing four cylinders i got four pound i got four pound in english money a kilo of brass and the big ones especially was three kilos each of iron so that give me 12 kilo which I was going on 150 pounds a ton, which is not, it's dropping out to about 100 pounds a ton for light iron. So that'd be one pound 20, five pound 20, five and, and four pound, five pound 20, but still one pound 30p, one pound 20, but between 125 and 130p for four cylinders. However, they're not all that size. There's diddly ones and there's middle sized ones. And it seems of the 63 cylinders I've had, there was in fact only three that have the very br big brass block on top. All the rest are these slim line brass fittings. So that throws my calculations out a little bit, even though I still play a little bit. That was the uh, 
as the only one. Right, I'm fussing out how to get these apart. Arranging it because you need a size of spanner to take that off. You need a different size of spanner to take that off. And a different size of spanner to take that off. Which means I've got one, two pair of more grips, that, that, that. I don't need much tools, though I do have a punch, a block, and a hammer. Right. Let's whip one apart for you. First thing I do is I, I knock the plastic bottom off. Then, Opening my woodwork vice, I give it a little nip up. That's just so that it uh, makes it easier for me to handle. So what have we got anyway? Well, we've got a brass fitting with a little gauge on to tell you whether it's full or not. You've know, got a handle. That, presses and breaks whatever's inside to release the pressure that forces everything out along the flex flexible tube to empty it. should say there was a safety pin in there so you pull the safety pin out, press down hard, it goes off. Right, I found it easier whilst it's in there to take my cable cutters and Cut off it. Much as I can. This spanner just fits over the gauge. You can oh, you can unscrew it. Same spanner, take off that. And fitting again, things are not really tight on here. Take the spanner, uh, not that, take my grips, pull that one off, unscrew that. I can spin it around because there's another one on that side that takes it. 12 milli spanner. And once you've just done that, it's finger tight. You can just take them off. Because there's a little spring inside there. Right. Give it a good dip up. Ain't going nowhere. And more often than not, I can just twist this off. Yeah, they're not in that tight. Right. And we come off with a long tube. And that is what's inside of here. Obviously the long tube, it's got perforations at the bottom. That uh, will allow. What's going to happen? There's, there's gas in there. Because that gas is under pressure and I've pressed the handle and released a hole, then whatever's in this cylinder, the gas will want to come out, will force everything, in this case, it's soapy water, up that tube and out of that nozzle. Right. Well, I didn't mention the. Uh, Thing for just snap that off and I just snap that off and throw it with the rest of the ring pulls. There's nothing else to that apart from I'm going to take the top off in a minute. Right. I can't see where the gas is going to be in here. Right, I've pressed that handle well, everything starts coming out 
but that just unscrews. Okay. I just do screws and that is just a that's just a tube. It's just a tube and you can see straight through it. Which I didn't really didn't really expect anything else. But where does the gas come from? Have a look. Right, so we've got a spring down there. So that unscrews. And we've got a coil spring on the inside, which I happen to know is. Magnetic. Some of those, or the others, are stainless. We've got the valve. This is the bit that, when you press that down, that bit, that bit, that bit, that bit, that bit in there, that, that brass bit there, when you press that down, will f force this valve down mean anything can come out of there but that's easy enough to get out just press it out so you've got me gifs there haven't you you press that handle down shoves that valve down really that o-ring is unseated and everything bypasses it and comes out that hose i still don't know how the gas is in here right there's a rubber o-ring that just comes off there is a two-piece riveted handle wrong type this type that's got the pin all the way through you can just take your snips and pull one side off Using, using leverage gives you that and then you can do the same again like that that's on this type and you've got the iron to go in the iron tub these riveted ones probably going to take hammer and chisel or just hammer or hammer and or grinder we'll, we'll get back to that Right, so, I'm puzzled. How does the gas, where's the gas? Yeah, 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 hang on. That was the form, let's try the, let's try the water one. Because I'm puzzled. There we go. Right. Let's get your back up here. Right. Can you see me? Yeah, you can. Right. So I've just quickly taken a water one off and a foam one off. And they look pretty much identical. Are they the same as what I've just done? So there's no there's no CO2 canister inside of this. And I don't know because how do they fill it? How do they fill these? I've no idea. If anyone knows how they fill these, let me know in the comments. Right. Unless. Right. 
unless the valve's down, which means it, it's open all the way down there. And then they connect something up and fill it, then let the valve up to seal it, and then screw the uh, holes in. Sounds very labor intensive. Doesn't sound right unless you've got some sort of some sort of machine comes down that's got a big rubber ring sealing ring on. You know. It puts it in the fills it up, they release it, that holds the pressure and water inside of it. And then this that's got to be put on. But again, that's a bit kind of labour intensive. I'm gonna Google this. It's outside of my skill set. Skill set. Taking things bits is my skill set. <sighs> Figuring out things. Backward engineering I like I like doing. Unless, 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 of course, if I can take this off, right, okay, see all, you, all you've got there is a spring on the inside, so unless That's it. That's all right on there. Spurs. So many litres. 81... 8.16 litres. That's just a tube. I'm, I'm kind of thinking like there was a... An ampule in there. And when you pressed it, it broke it. Which released all the gas. But... You're not going to have that much gas in kind of like a... A breakable ampule, are you? And if there was... There'd be bits of it left, and there ain't. I'm sorry, we're dragging on now. It's one of those things, once you uncover something else, it leads to something else. I won't sleep now until I know how these are filled up. We need to drink. Says multi and rich. It's not the same as old speckled then. It isn't. Carry on. Right, I'm going to start wrapping this up because the whole object is how much brass is there? Because these big solid ones weigh considerably more than these that appear to be on all the others. And they're coming in at 220, but that's including the gauge. I'll have to speak to Robert if uh, he'll accept that as it is. Right, so instead of being four to the pound, sorry, instead of being four to the kilogram, I'm going to now say it's five to the kilogram. Take that off. Yeah, just under. Uh, changes the economics a little bit the weight of the cylinders are not going to change right where are the cylinders you may ask well i did say earlier putting one inside of the other gave me an idea and the very astute of you at the very beginning of this video may have seen this one at the back it was like that so, what have I done? Well, I cut the top off. I like Russian dolls. I can put one, two, three cylinders inside of one big cylinder with 
all the caps that I took off as well. Boosh! Space saving. End of the day, takes a little bit more time. Uh, and people are going to say, well, it takes cutting discs. Right. Fortunately, I work at a company where I get lots of part worn cutting discs. I mean, a full one isn't really much bigger, but full one isn't really much bigger than one of them. Okay, but the nature of the job is you can't use them once they've got down to a certain size, so they throw them away or they throw them my way. So I get these. Okay, it means I have to change a blade quite a lot more frequently, but at least they're free. A lot of people have to pay for these. Uh, Aldi do a very good job uh, when they do sell them. Uh, 10 for 4 49 pence each, 50 pence each. So that's quite a good buy. Uh, so I'm going to carry on cutting up Take her off the top of my silliness and put in little ones inside of one of them, one of them inside of one of them, and one of them inside of one of them. Hell for the hell of it, I might even tack the tops on. No, that's a bit more, that's a bit of overkill, isn't it? Little bit of disappointed in of the 63 or so cylinders I got. There's only two or three which are aluminium. So is it worth it? To a hobbyist scrapper, yes. Beats getting washing machines. These are just, they're just small enough to just handle in here. Maybe not at 48 at a time, but hey, I'll get quicker, I'll get faster. Right. Okay, and this is not tonight, I don't have a time tonight, but for Guido Waddelt, who was interested, my friend Guido, my buddy, even though I know I annoy him something rotten, but I keep talking over him in on the live streams. Mates do that. <laughs> I've got... A, a foam one outside. I still don't know the gas gets inside. He seems to think there's a a gas cartridge. From what I've seen, there isn't. Now, not with a powder one, and probably not with a water one. But I've got it with a foam one. I'm going to take the top off without squeezing the handle. So if there is some kind of pressure capsule inside of that long tube I won't have broke it and if as I crack it all the gas dirt's coming out it means it's been pressurised in the filling process that's the way I that's the way I'm looking at it but we'll do a short video on that next because I can't do it in here I don't want going everywhere in here do I right in the shed Does that look say it all? I'll see you about. I'm gonna crack on with this lot. I brought it home. I have to deal with it. See you soon. Yes, the doctor will see you now. Right. Oh, told you it was warm in here. Right. As I'm cutting the tops off these, you know, easy peasy, cut the top off, nine inch angle grinder, makes the job easy, and you can see, you know, very close fitting, so I can get quite a few, well, another one, two sizes in there, maybe three sizes, narrows it down quite a lot, but it was getting a bit smoky in here, I was puzzled as to why. Well, it works out, and I should have known this really. Water, steel cylinder, 
it's got a plastic liner. So that's why I'm getting all the uh, all the smoke in here. Uh, I just thought you wanted to know that. Well, if you remember this picture, and though you might find it hard to believe, but apart from the three that I've got outside, which I'm keeping for the garage, they're all there. And that's just a matter of cutting the tops off and shoving them all inside of each other. Some, I cut the top off, I cut the bottom off, and I slipped down it, which allowed me to squeeze it in and bang it in. Did that with more than one, so I could compress that curl load down into something that's quite manageable. <laughs> 